friends, it's Margaret, and it's time to nerd out about The Bells by Danielle Clayton. The Bells is the first book in a trilogy, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. I just know that there is another book that's supposed to be coming out, and I kind of need it. But obviously, I, I only have this one, so we will survive, I guess. The Bells follows Camellia Beauregard. So the world that Camellia lives in, the people have been stripped of all color. There was kind of almost like a war between the different gods. That's the mythology that we're given. And so because everyone was stripped of color, one of the goddesses gave the people the bells. And the bell's job is to bring color and life back into the people's. Like people are born gray and so bells will bring color back into them. They can make your skin just about any color. I think there's someone who's midnight blue mentioned in here. They can change the way your body is shaped, the way your body looks. Uh, they have, I mean, pretty impressive, massive powers and obviously along with that comes some serious downsides as well. The bells are trained and then when they turn 16 they are revealed to the court. They go to different bell, uh, different, the uh, basically beauty shops on the different islands in this kingdom. The kingdom's name is Orleans. It's very much based on New Orleans and kind of you get a very New Orleans Mardi Gras kind of French court feeling in this book. So Camellia's main goal is to become the queen's favorite. She wants to be the top belle, the favorite. Her mother was the favorite. She feels like that's it's her job to be the favorite of this queen. In doing that, she ends up getting drawn into the court intrigue and politics that are going on there. And she's find, she finds like there's some issues with the family and she gets drawn into all of that and it's a mess. I really, really liked this book. I was a little worried starting it because I know I'd heard some mixed reviews on YouTube. Um, everyone that I was seeing on Twitter was loving it and everyone that I was seeing on um, YouTube was not particularly happy with it or interested in it. I don't know. I thought it was a good book. I thought it was well written. I gave it four out of five stars because I really enjoyed it. I I understand that there, I, I, there are a couple of like legitimate issues that I don't want to spoil. Um, that I understand, but it's the first book in a series, so I feel like the author is going to correct those issues as we go on. I really liked Danielle Clayton's writing style. I thought it was very interesting because, you know, you're in this world where everyone is, is in shades of gray, and then she is picking out, like, pointing out, like, within the first, the first chapter, I think, um, she's got references, like, just so many references, like, color is everywhere in this book. These people are surrounding themselves with color because they don't feel beautiful and they feel inadequate. Um, and so they're trying to surround themselves and in, in ways to try and kind of counter the effects of the fact that everyone is born gray and not everyone is born beautiful by this world's standards. I really liked Camellia. I liked her sisters. I liked the relationship that you, you don't get to see as much of it as I would have liked, but you do get to see some of it. And I think we'll see a lot more in the next book. It's a very difficult situation because these bells, like it, they're not given any choice, basically. They're kind of brainwashed and taught to want to be this this cre this person that creates beauty um, and they're taught to kind of bow to the whims of their patrons and that kind of thing, which is very uncomfortable. There were several places where I'm just like, oh, just tell her no, just tell her you won't do it. Just tell her that no, that's too much. Um, but again, at the same time, she's in a situation where like telling people that was not good. Here's one of those passages that I really, really liked. Um, at the beginning. It's a wonderland of palace buildings with golden turrets and glittering arches, fountains full of crimson and ivory fish, topiary mazes of clipped trees, shrubs, and bushes in every possible geometric shape. Imperial canals circle the square holding jeweled boats bright as gemstones and shaped like smiling moons on midnight blue water. Like she just like there's color everywhere. Here's another one that I really liked. It's not it's not a color reference, but I just really like the sentence and it's um at the very beginning when they're being presented. My heart thuds to the beat of her applause. Like that is just such an evocative sentence. I loved her writing style. I loved how detailed she was, how she kind of just broke this world apart. I really liked how she set up the magic system, the arcana in this world, the way that you kind of it's almost like a hidden secret. Not everyone quite knows what it is. But we don't go a lot into that because even as a bell, a lot has been kept from Camellia and that's part of the, the intrigue of the plot. Um, the plot was really good. Like it was fast paced and like stuff kept 
happening. At the very beginning, she sets it up and you're like, oh, it's going to be this kind of plot. And then some stuff changes and so you're like, oh, it's going to be this kind of plot. So she kept bringing in new dimensions and new problems for Camellia to face on top of the ones she already had. Every time you she thought she had it figured out, stuff would get thrown at her and thrown her way. The only thing I could have done without is so many things like were Belle products. Like uh, you had like Belle roses and the Belle tea and the Belle this and the Belle that. And to some extent, I really liked the idea of that being a brand and kind of being a thing. It was basically like Disney for people in this world. But there were a few places where I felt like it went a little overboard. I mean, Belle makeup, I didn't think it needed to be Belle makeup. I think everyone is makeup is makeup. I understand like there's this whole like a line of products that these people push out to help people maintain their appearance because whatever the bells do to you it doesn't hold eventually it starts to wear and as you get older it wears faster. I really felt a connection with Camellia because I understand what it's like to expect something and then be disappointed and then have it turn out to be way more than you we're expecting or you think that you can deal with. Uh, there are a whole bunch of, when she becomes a favorite, there are a whole bunch of other problems that kind of get handed to her because she has this magic. So people assume that she can fix these things and help them achieve their dreams and their goals. The queen's daughter. Oh my gosh. Like, ugh. I know we're going to have to deal with her more, but I did not like her. I mean, she was a, she was a good, well-faceted antagonist and you kind of understood why she was the way she was but at the same time like I just wanted to chuck her off a building. I'm not sure how I feel about the the romance possibilities. I mean and when I say I'm not sure I mean there's sort of a, a love triangle going on right now and you Margaret doesn't like love triangles. She likes to know root for this one or that one. That's the way Margaret is. And it was cute and sweet and I liked it and then there were issues. Ugh. There were issues, and like exactly the kind of issues that I am a sucker for the tropes. I'm a sucker for so many tropes. It's bad. It's so bad. All in all, I thought it was a good book. I know people's interests and tastes are a little bit different, depending on like, I understand why some people might not have liked it, but I felt like it was a good book, that she did give you an interesting plot, she gave you interesting characters, she gave you just like the tip of the iceberg in this world. There's a whole bunch of stuff that gets thrown in there about like, stuff that that she hasn't been told and I'm just saying like I was at the end of this book and you don't get all of the answers you you barely get any answers because Camellia has barely got barely gotten any answers and so as a reader that's on the one hand that's frustrating but on the other hand it's like oh so now I need the next book it ended in a super weird place that like not in a bad way weird but like a, a I need the next book now weird again four out of five stars I really liked I thought it was good I would read it again but I really want to read the next one. I do wish my library copy, you can't, look at this, you can't even, it's so sad because they put that there, even though you don't use those on library and libraries anymore. I can't even like flip back and forth to figure out where stuff is. That is what I thought of the bells. I, again, four out of five stars. I really liked it. I think you should pick it up too. If you are into any kind of like weird, whimsical fantasy in alternate versions of history almost. And I loved how dark and complicated it was. I was not expecting, I was not expecting to go the places that it went. And I was not expecting Camellia to have the attitude that she had. I don't want to spoil what that attitude is, but I really liked the way she approached her powers and the way she approached the position that she was going to be given. If you found this review helpful at all, don't forget to give us a like and hit the subscribe button. I make bookish chats every Saturday where I talk about books that I have read recently. If you'd like to see more of my bookish thoughts, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Those are at the word nerd and that's a three in nerd instead of an E. I also have a blog where I talk about all things reading and writing. That is also down in the description box along with all of my other links. That is it for now folks. I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye! <music>